much for coming back to Alba Studios YouTube channel. This is the second class of the Art and Design 101 series and it's called Warm Ups with Optical Art. If you missed the first class titled 11 Tips for Beginner Artists, I will suggest you watch it since this class and the rest of the series will build on points from that first lesson. This lesson though is all about warm ups more than you've ever wanted to know but likely about warm-ups art warm-ups that is but we're going to discuss what they are some definitions why we should do them we'll talk about that i'm going to give you some fun examples that people with any artistic ability can do and then we're going to end up with three op art pieces optical art pieces <laughs> uh one being this guy or this chick here and one that I'm saving for the end that kind of puts what you learned all together and for materials the only things you need are two drawing utensils they could be the same or different any color doesn't matter seven to ten pieces of paper and some tape or a clip something to hold down the paper you're drawing on since we'll be doing some two-handed warm-ups down the line here but otherwise I believe we're ready right on let's start while we talk about warm-ups, I'm just going to be making some very loose, free drawings. Please join me, and then we'll make more concise ones as we go. Live action, that just broke. So our first definition of a warm-up is the exercise we do before a project. Also, it is a slow workup in intensity of an activity. We don't start hard, we work our way up. It is also a training, I think. We forget about this, that we're practicing as we're warming up too. So we're also training ourselves since we're using our muscles and doing all kinds of stuff. And we'll talk about that. But why should we do them? Well, we do them because for one, they get the project started. The very fact that we're just getting the motion happening, it increases our likelihood of making something. We are proactively seeking the inspiration rather than waiting for it to magically happen. It's like setting a ball in motion. It must be pushed into motion and they help us get familiar with our tools. Every tool feels differently. It deposits pigment differently. They sound different in way and look different. For example, this woodless graphite pencil is much heavier than the colorful wooden pencil that I just used. Warm-ups help us get used to our surroundings, even the noises in our chair or desk, if we're standing or sitting, whatever. And we could decide to move things around or use different tools and you will develop your taste for your favorites and your preferences will evolve. They also help us literally get us limbered up we are encouraging our muscles and mind to limber up and memorize movements. And this muscle memory building thing is no joke. When I first did this exercise, the continuous line, big circle, small circle, left to right was no problem, but right to left and switching directions totally threw me off. We learn as we go, we learn and we get a little better each time. Keep in mind when we're drawing to, let's use our full range of arm. For the bigger circles, for example, I use my shoulder more and lock the elbow and wrist. And for the smaller circles or smaller shapes, whatever they may be, uh, use more your digits and your wrist. But practice using, yeah, more of a full range of your arm. By the way, I am just continuing with very basic warm ups, switching directions, and using the full length of my arm. In the next reason why we should do warm-ups why they help they help us transition so they help us switch gears our time creating is very very different from our typical busy work day where we breeze past our day just to keep up when we're busy our mind makes patterns and groups things into quickly identifiable objects and keep this in mind when we talk about optical illusions it's kind of related to what i'm talking about here but um, during the day, our brain ignores the details, but when we practice art, we stop the busy and we want to take in the details. And we study the object we're drawing, we hear the mark it is making on the piece of paper. We're just more focused on one thing. Very similar to meditation, and we need a moment or two to switch into this meditative, peaceful state. Next, warm-ups give us permission to play. 
when we're warming up, we are not on our actual project, so we are free to play. Warm-ups are less rigid and we don't need an eraser, that's why it wasn't on the list of materials needed. <laughs> we don't need to use any one particular tool. We can explore possibilities and brainstorm in our drawings. So try a pen that you've never used or hold your favorite one differently. Yeah, just play around and experiment with different ways, different directions, different speeds, like I'm doing here, trying to fit in between the lines, you know, trying to speed myself up a little. Warm-ups help us get over judging ourselves as well. So now that we've kind of stretched ourselves a little bit, we broke the rules a bit, made imperfect exploratory doodles, we can get over feeling so restricted. We have already allowed ourselves to explore a bit, so we are more willing to do something silly or new on our quote-unquote real project. How long you warm up depends on how often you draw it and the difficulty of that piece. So to give you a number from 15 to 45 minutes, I don't know, 10 to 30, as long as you start kind of with loose, easy warm-ups and work up to more deliberate, focused warm-ups. You can change the directions, you could change the pressure, the tools, the grip. So do successions of a few of your favorite useful warm-ups relevant to your project. For example, if you're gonna draw rigid buildings and straight lines, then you might wanna practice straight lines more. If you're gonna draw oceans and wind, etc., then you're gonna draw flowing, gestural, fluid warm-ups. A little frustration is good, keep that in mind, but think of it as growing pains. It's just part of it and we learn it every time. Warm-ups help us get into our creative space where ideas are generated. Let's try some different kinds of warm-ups. This one is called Squiggle Bird Warm-Up from GameStorming.com with this exercise that anyone can do. And so you're basically just drawing different types of squiggles and making things like little symbols or icons symbolic of a certain animal, this one being a bird. So I'm adding a beak, the tail, some legs that look like obvious little bird legs, but it just shows how your mind works and how you don't need to be a fine artist. Your brain will recognize those special shapes that are symbolic of that animal. And then that's all you need. I mean, this is great for kids or anyone that doesn't consider, consider themselves an artist. I mean, they're cute, you know, they're not realistic drawings, but they're fun. Try them. Check out what I'm doing here. I'm making a different animal using the same type of squiggle doodle technique. And I'm adding different indicators of a different animal. And I was confident that it looks like a pig until my man said, oh yeah, I see the dog. Wow. I mean, it's, it's kind of floating in the air. The hooves are kind of detached, but I like strange floaty pigs, I guess. I showed enough variation for my mind to assign pig to it. It's just enough. It's just enough for your brain to recognize it. I mean, this is a pig, right? This little oinker, it's definitely a pig. <laughs> Here are some examples, just kind of having fun and getting warmed up. And you know, before your serious project, it's nice to have a little fun and see the variations. I mean, some of these look like they're upside down and laying on the floor or just, you know, you can accidentally make a pretty cool one too. And with this squiggle bird exercise, I guess some of the main points are that it shows how our brain uses shortcuts to identify objects, right? Because we're just doing squiggles and then little symbolic things. It shows how the mind fills in the gaps so you really don't have to be a great artist. I think these are fun and worth it. Give it a try, let me know what you think. So moving on to the first of the stream of consciousness warm-ups. You're kind of just going crazy, but you're using two utensils, one piece of paper. I taped it down, but you're just going all over the place, basically just scribbling. So you're using both hands. This is taken from Joy Spring channel. I'll provide the link in the description and it's in the printable form that I provide in the description too, if you want to just have an outline of the class. These exercises, stream of consciousness type of warm-ups, they remind me of that kind of writing, like those writing exercises where you just write whatever you want and it kind of helps just the words get going. And it's the same idea here, except with drawing. And then on this, your doodling freely and the doodles are facing the same direction so the hands are kind of following each other and it feels really good it feels very free and different i don't know try it on this third one your doodles face each other so they're like 
mirroring each other, they're facing the opposite direction. And this one I think just feels really good. The first time I did this one, I was like, um, felt like it kind of tickled my brain. I don't know, but it just feels um, like it's something we're not used to doing. Uh, my boyfriend said that it's like, it might be really difficult for some people to do. Um, I found it to be very soothing and natural and um, maybe it feels awkward the left hand and the right hand mirror each other. Let me know what you think about this one. I, I just think this one feels especially nice. We will move on and talk about optical illusions. What the heck is that? What is it? I like to define things. First, a misleading image presented to the vision is what Merriam-Webster says. It is our mind making sense of all the info it is bombarded with. Our mind simplifies what it sees to create meaning is another. What we see differs from reality, so we call it an optical illusion. Our mind can see things from various perspectives. It's important to remember just how, gosh, how amazing the mind is. And so I wanted to show you the very first optical illusion I've ever seen. I remember this when I was a kid, I don't know, in elementary school, perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> There's two women. One is the younger woman and one is the older woman, or it's called the wife and the mother-in-law. So the younger woman is turning away from us and looking in that direction. We could see mostly the side of her face, the jaw right there, and her little tip of her nose and eyelashes, and then her necklace like a choker, and then she's wearing a furry coat. Her neck is down there, her furry coat, her feathers, blah, 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 her hair. and on the older woman, that's her eyes, where the ear was. And that's her mouth, and that whole thing is her face. And her eyes are looking like at her feet or something like that. So that one's interesting. This is not the kind of optical illusion we're gonna be making, but it's just important to mention as like a classic optical illusion. We will move on, and I wanted to start with this one. It's called Worm Op Art. It's kind of what I've seen it called. And I've seen different versions. I'm just kind of combining what I've seen and doing my own. So we'll start with a wavy line and you can make it wavier. You can make it straighter across different effects. Try different things. And I love this exercise because you don't have to sketch it first. You just do it. And so you just keep making these little arches and you go all the way. You can make them bigger. Or smaller it doesn't matter there's different outcomes you know depending on your style and what you decide to to use so I want the ends to meet but I don't want it to be like a rainbow yeah so it's more like looking like a clam like a like clams or something so you just keep going all the way to the other side and then you go over it again and you land right in that little edge there the little indent make each each semicircle <laughs> you can make some closer to the previous semicircle you can make it further away you can make them different you could start even building higher up on one so that as you continue that one will always be a little bigger you could pick a few to do that too and just keep going i'm gonna finish this off while you enjoy the really cool music by ryan thaxter dub thanks so much for the music i'm um, so so lucky to have my own soundtrack and it's just so cool for artists to come together and collaborate and let me know what you guys think of the music. There's some cool stuff. Guys, every video that I make is going to feature a different song and my intro music is also his and the outro, if it's even called that. <laughs> but so yeah, keep going guys. I'm going to let you enjoy the music and relax. You're gonna, you're gonna like the results. All right, peace. Okay guys, so we finished this first side 
and you see how some pieces like disappear and some parts are bigger like bulging out and it's pretty cool you could flip the page over now and continue with the first row that you've done and just keep going the same way it's looking cool right make something up if you're running into a little issue oh like where do i go there where do i put the line it's okay right now we're just practicing it's not about beauty but it is pretty cool looking some people do want to color this and i like to use just the marker is cool it's very black and white to me and i know i just want to keep it that way <laughs> so enjoy guys i'll get back to you peace Okay guys, so we're done with the first up art. I love how some of the sides kind of turn into the left, um, depending on where you put the line, how low on the side of the worm <laughs> you start it and how big you make that loop. I made some to kind of veer to the left or veer to the right. I'm gonna keep mine black and white, but feel free to color yours. Um, show a kid, I think kids would find this really interesting. I love kids and encourage you to teach any kid around you. I'm going to do the next one, so with a, a clean sheet or the back side of something. Super cool too. Just uh, get your hand on a piece of paper. Lightly trace your hand, just enough to be able to see. This will end up erasing. I'm going to use this marker. Sometimes I like to use a ruler. I will for the next one because I do want to show a contrast. Let's just start with free longer strokes, we might want to use our shoulder to help us a little bit. These don't have to be totally straight. This is really good practice. All right guys, so as soon as we get to the shape of our finger is just go up high. In this one, I'm gonna trace the finger outline and then keep going, continue on to the right. The only time I am changing the line is when I reach the outline of the finger. And I just keep doing that over, I'll go straight line. And do like an arch when I have when I'm inside the boundary of the fingers and then it goes straight and as you go then you're gonna work with more of the fingers and then you go straight when you get in between you do your arch and you go straight again you do your arch and you go straight again so you just go straight whenever you're outside of your fingers you just go straight at a straight angle from left to right or right to left if you do it that way I'll just keep going for a while guys enjoy the music this is super meditative fun you're focused you're you know right now you're listening to me but when you do this on your own it's really nice be focused okay i'll come back to you guys All right guys, so done the fingers pretty much. Yes, it's a little tricky when there's an angle. But you'll just learn as you go and then it's gonna turn out cool anyway. So just keep going and then once you reach the palm of your hand, you're just gonna do the same thing. But rather than having a finger to do the arch in, you're gonna do the arch all over the whole palm of your hand. Just do a straight line, arch over the whole hand and then go straight after that. Just keep going. Alright everyone, we're done with our hand all the way down. I'm also going to keep this one just black and white. Feel free to color it. You can also do some shading right here where the shadow would be uh, in between the fingers. You can put some soft pencil and rub it out a little bit to make it look a little more three-dimensional. 
congrats. I'm going to show you this last one to wrap up the understanding of optical art and you'll see how you can apply this to any shape to make it your own. I am going to use a ruler just to make it a little more precise. What we're going to do kind of looks like in a dimension, like it just kind of something that's kind of warped. You can make a heart, you can make an airplane, you can make uh, whatever you want. It's up to you. And then we're going to start at the top of the page and I'm just going to make straight lines. Straight lines all the way down. Straight lines, straight lines. And once you get to the pencil mark of the shape that you outlined, that's the one that we're going to now avoid. So we're going to continue with a straight line. When you reach the border, just skip over the shape, leave it blank, and then just continue with the straight line. I leave my ruler there to help me with that, but then yeah, just continue working around the shape, just with the straight lines right now. And so then guys, when you get to your shape that you made with pencil, you're going to then make any kind of wave you want. And then when you get to the end where your circle boundary is, then go super straight. I love this one. I like how this one turns out. So yeah, just keep going guys. Follow the shape that you made. That's the warp. The shape that's happening inside the circle is what's going to look like it's something on the page. Something is there. All right, guys, we're here almost at the end. I want to remind you to enjoy, don't rush. Well, I don't want to tell you what not to do, but to try to enjoy the relaxing, meditative part of that. Even when we make things that aren't perfect, it looks pretty cool. And at least we're making something and we're getting better each time. It takes a lot of deliberate practice, like all things in life we want to learn. But if you build on something each day, you keep adding knowledge, you keep adding practice, you keep adding interaction with it, you'll eventually get something. It's different for every person, but you'll eventually get it or get gigs or come across the right people. Things will happen. That's how you'll show you really want something. You're out there trying to get it. In this case, just taking a class and doing the work. And it's not work, it's fun. You guys see? So here we have this little bare bones kind of warp thing. It doesn't look like much, but you see the switch in the lines tells our brain that there's form there, that there's something different there. And I love that. I love this interesting, interesting topic. And we'll dive more into that as we do more classes and do different series. So I added a little bit of, I just got a marker and filled in every other line to just to see what this would look like. And I'll use it as a backdrop for the wrap up, the wrap up of our warm ups. So we covered what word maps are, a few different definitions, why we should do them. We talked about optical illusions and the brain. And we did three op art pieces that we never did before, like this. And this. And these. Different angle. But before all that, we did warm ups. We just got loose, talked about using your whole arm, and then also gave seven reasons to do warm ups along with some fun and easy new warm ups that perhaps you've never done before. Good for any level artist. And did this thing that made us feel a little different and <laughs> using both of our arms. And then we made animals out of little doodles, little chickadees. And then we talked about optical illusions, talked about this classic one here and how our brain is involved in all this. I'd be thrilled if you found value in Alba Studios art channel and subscribed. We have big plans. Please feel free to comment. I love comments and I respond to each one. Follow us on Insta and be part of our growth. Share this video with others who'd benefit from basic art lessons, students or teachers. Below we provide a class summary PDF of each class precisely for this reason. Take care, see you very soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs>